Thank you, Madam Chair. I thank all of you for being here today. Um, Professor Ghosh, did I say your name correctly? Yes, thank you. Um, West Virginia needs more, I'm from West Virginia, we need more connectivity. But to close that the digital divide, I've been technology neutral because we have a lot of mountains. Not every technology works in our state. Um, and fixed wireless has shown some promise. So how do you see the role of fixed wireless uh, after future auctions playing out in the rural areas? Um, thank you for that question. Uh, I think the rural connectivity is um, about more than just spectrum. It's about uh, having deployments. So you can have all the spectrum in the world, but if base stations are not deployed, you're not gonna get coverage. Um, and there are, uh, we've done a lot of work with rural areas in Illinois where we have the same problem where farms are not connected. So I think we have to be more creative in getting rural and isolated communities connected. Um, CBRS is actually proving to be a great alternative to doing that. It's shared spectrum. Um, but uh, if you have a satellite that, back home. Could you say, what, what is that CB? CBRS, that's the Citizens Broadband Radio Service. Okay. That is shared spectrum, 3.55 to 3.7 gigahertz. It's shared with Navy radar, but the US has led in coming up with a system of sharing that's very effective. Mm -hmm. uh, Would that be affected by an auction? Um, it's already been auctioned, so that okay. band is already so that's available. Already gone. Okay. It's already available. Uh, there are three ways that you can get to it. You can either have bought licenses at the auction that happened in 2021, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, or you can also use it like an unlicensed, uh, uh, in an unlicensed mode called general authorized access, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which gives you all of the benefits of having paid at. Uh, for auction, uh, and the real benefits that you get with CBRS as compared to see either Wi-Fi or cellular mm -hmm. is it's in a frequency band that propagates very far, much further than Wi-Fi does, and in terms of cellular, it you don't have to pay to access that spectrum. Mm -hmm. So this is working very well. Many communities, even in uh, South Bend, we have a deployment with CBRS was deployed by the city of South Bend to serve its um, uh, lower income uh, students. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not an underserved area. There are other options, but you know, uh, uh, talking about the ACP mm -hmm. and looking for ways to get it more affordable, CBRS is offering that option for communities to take control of their connectivity needs. Okay. Um, Mr. Brown, um, we have a, the National Radio Quiet Zone is in West Virginia. Uh, and uh, we have half of that, uh, but it restricts transmissions to allow for, uh, b so that it allows for advanced scientific research and other sensitive technology operates without interference. And we're a very remote part of our state, but where we're running into problems here is it also conflicts with the 911 service and the ability to deliver service. So when you have a conflict like that, um, how in those sensitive areas can we continue to work so that you can you do the innovation that you need to do on the um, in the quiet zone area, but you can still serve your citizens on the 911. Anybody have an answer for that? Uh, that is a difficult question when you have quiet zones, um, and that requires a lot of technical analysis to look at: Are there wireless uh, signals uh, that could be propagated uh, at low power at a low level? in order to deliver the 911 technology that you need while not interfering with the radio astronomy. Radio astronomy also has a number of bands available to it, and uh, it may be that uh, you have to uh, uh, ascertain which of those bands is going to be uh, best if you are concerned about uh, having 911 connectivity at that facility. Okay, the thank Engineering you. problem, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm thinking about the folks out in Pocahontas County where this is located. They're yes. going to need some technical expertise. Obviously, the state can help, but this has been a chronic uh, issue out there. Um, so I'm going to ask just a general question. I don't have all that much time left, like 35 seconds. But if a, if a regular citizen is sitting here listening about we're going to auction spectrum, what does that mean to them? So who wants to take that? We'll give it to one person. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think when you bring additional spectrum online, it's gonna improve the user's experience. What we've seen across the networks is that we're at, we're at capacity. And so if we're able to bring more spectrum, you're gonna be able to get um, stronger, faster, more resilient signal. 
So what I think of uh, somebody who maybe is in an unserved and underserved area who's gotten, who's been promised and hopefully through the IIJA we're going to be able to deliver this, I think what they hear is we're going to improve all of the things that have already been improved upon and you're still going to be left behind. No, no, it's absolutely, and it's incumbent upon us to articulate how we can get more coverage out to our rural communities, and that's a big part of this as well, and exactly where the spectrum bands are coming into play, and then the carriers are able to build out in your, um, in your area. All right, thank you.